Oh man. Yeah. No, I was just having a snooze in the coach. Yeah. You what? Right? Are you? It's a clear skies. Okay. Where are you going? Oh, yeah, man. Call me in. Okay. All right, so quick. See you shortly. Good luck. It's not often that I get clear skies during Milky Way season in Ireland, and when I get a call that conditions are right, I didn't hesitate in packing my bag and heading out into the night to see what I could find. Now I don't do this form of photography that often, so I wasn't going to waste the opportunity, even if I didn't know exactly what I was doing. Welcome back to the channel, welcome back to the vlog. Today you join me, it's not today, it's actually tonight, and after I got that phone call from my buddy Keith, aka McSnapagram, that he's heading off down to a spot that I love so much, which is called Nohoval. We're going there at night, so what could we possibly be going looking for? Milky Way. So, we've got two hours of clear skies, it's going to be a late one, but yeah, let's go, let's see how we get on, and see if I can get some shots tonight. I started here to try and tell you that I was going to take some shots for the sky and then a long exposure shot for the foreground and blend them together later in post. I would be taking a number of shots at 21 seconds to ensure I wouldn't be getting any movement in the stars at 24 millimeters. Then a longer 4 minute exposure for the foreground to try and have as much detail and at least noise as possible. But like I said, I don't really know what I'm doing. So rather than me bluff my way through it, I figured I'd go ask the two guys instead. So I've come over now to uh, two of the lads who know exactly what they're doing and I'm going to be asking a question here to a guy who's extremely talented, his name is Kean. he's from Cork and he's gotten some incredible shots over the last number of months, years really, particularly from the um, astro point of view as well. So Kean, how's it going? Not too bad. Come here, question for you. You, you, can, drop the, you can drop the talented part, I'd say. I know, I'll add that in even more <laughs> so. Come here, looking at your rig there, you've got a lot of stuff that's on it that I don't. What, are you, what have you got? What are you doing? How are you, how are you doing your shots? Yeah, so I have um, Sky Adventure Mini Tracker on. So it is polar aligned to the north there. Polaris behind us. So it's facing directly north. And I have an equatorial mount um, that just basically helps with all the aligning. Right. And then I have just a ball head on top, which is at, a, at an angle. Um, and then basically my camera is facing the Milky Way, but the tracker is facing north. Um, and I'm just currently shooting a dark frame. So. I have four sky, four sky shots at uh, five minutes tracked five, ISO 500, f3.5. Um, I go up, stop up a little bit so that you get sharper stairs. Right. Um, you can afford to do it on the tracker. And uh, so I have four of them done and now I'm just shooting a dark frame. So dark frame just helps with noise, uh, reduces all the noise and you get better um, contrast in the Milky Way on the shadows and darks as well. So Sweet. So I've run four by five minutes and then I'm just going to run my dark frame same way as so, same time. So I'll just knock that off now, five minutes. 
And tell me with the tracker, right? So you're saying you do got it aligned, so that follows the Milky Way. So when you've got a longer exposure, then it's taking the same star and it's moving along with that the whole way through, is it? Yeah, so you can see actually my camera's probably at a bit of an angle, so I started it straight on the horizon and as it's turning, camera gets a little bit off centered but I'm following the Milky Way. So you get a blurred foreground because the camera is actually moving at the moment. Right. And then what we do is turn the tracker off and then get a long exposure for your foreground and then blend the two together uh, Sweet. in Photoshop. Sweet. So, so that's the secret to how you get such incredible good shots, oh yeah? Yeah, it just helps with detail, reduces noise. Um, and yeah, you can, I suppose, you, when you track and stack the Milky Way, you get really, really good detail. Um, so shooting at 16 mil at the moment just suits the foreground a lot better. And the difference then for me is if I'm shooting, I have to limit my exposure time because the longer I do it, then I get movement in the stars, whereas you don't have that because it's following the stars the whole way along. So you can go up, what, four minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes if you wanted to. Yeah, if it's really, really accurately aligned, uh, 20 minutes, but I suppose uh, at five minutes there, I'm at ISO 500, so anything below 1,000 is uh, really good detail. So um, tend and not to go higher than five or six minutes usually myself. And then obviously because you've got a lower ISO as well, you've got less noise, whereas I have to bump my ISO up because I don't have the tracker and get them in one shot. So you've less noise then to be dealing with because you've got a lower ISO too. Yeah, so you're stuck to the 500 rule if you're uh, not tracking. So uh, you start getting start trails after, so you divide your, divide your um, focal length uh, into 500 and that's how many seconds you can shoot um, and that's the absolute maximum usually you can have to go a little bit lower than that class nice nice one for the uh, insights maybe i'll be able to get a good shot after learning that but i have to get a tracker next <laughs> but, uh, we'll, we'll, we can sit your camera up on the tracker there and give oh, it a we'll, go we'll give it a blast in a second yeah magic so I'll, thanks for that key and i'll show that image as well actually that, I, that i'll get once i get the uh, camera on the tracker sure, sure, man. Man. I'm now here with Keith, AKA Max Snapogram, and he's the reason why I'm actually dragged out in the middle of the night. And I'm so happy that you actually did drag me out now, to be fair, right? So tell me, how do you go about taking your uh, Astro shots? Um, well, I'm pretty much the same as Keith, to be honest with you. Uh, I have an Ioptron tracker, and uh, I just track the sky. Um, like, Tonight was a bit of a disaster for me because the trigger went. Right. <laughs> so I have it on the trigger on the, on the way, but it just didn't arrive in time. So I ended up just um, shooting multiple shots and then I'll just stack them later on. Okay. And, uh, so it's more or less the same what I'm going to have to do too, I suppose, to take yeah, multiple same, shots same and stack problem, them later. Yeah, so and, and just take it away. So I'll just doing that and then I'll uh, do that for the sky and then I'll just take my foregrounds there. So. I'll blend the two of them in later on. And to me, how important is it to have the right ISO when you're doing Astro? Uh, well, normally for, for the tracker, I'd recommend 6420 seconds. Again, depending on what focal length that you have, you know? So right. Anywhere between 16 to 24, you, you, you can get good 20 seconds without much star movement, you know? Okay, and then, you know, the moon, we arrived here just as the moon was setting, so obviously that's perfect for when you're doing astro. There's no light pollution in the sky, so the only light pollution you have to deal with then is ambient, real kind of yeah, city well, pollution. Like yeah, this, well, to be honest with you, this uh, this place now, Nova Cove, that we're in now at the moment, I actually like the light pollution because it lights up the, the cool hay fields and you get lovely yellows and greens, and uh, it goes nice against the Milky Way. I was here, I, the last time I was here, I got clouded in for it, so it's a bit of a... Bit of a joan at this place for me, I think, to be honest with you. The trigger went this time, and then the, fuck it, the cloud rolled in the last time. But hey, we got the shots out. 
And tell me, you guys there, you do some class shots there where you put yourselves as well uh, in the frame. How'd you do that? Yeah, well, what I do is I just, I have a flash, like a normal flash that people use, and I just, uh, just hit the faults and it just lights me up at the bottom. Um, I find the flash is a lot better because it just spreads the light around you more other than having to uh, blend in the head torches later on, shining up. But personally, I don't like that. I'd rather have the light on me, you know? Right, okay. Well, look, uh, thanks for dragging me out here, man. It's been uh, it's been great. Hopefully, I managed to get a couple of shots in here, which should be good, but I'd, I'd go off Keen's track with right there. Yeah, that's it. Well, you stacked out two five-minute exposures, and you've got plenty. That's the thing about tracking, you know? Um, once you track, you don't go back. <laughs> <laughs> True story, mate. True story, yeah. Uh, all right, nice one, dude. Thanks a million. No worries. That. As you can see, there is no comparison to my shots and both the shots the lads got. The tracker seems to be the way to go, but I don't think I'll be getting one anytime soon. This is a shot of my foreground and Keats track sky, and it turned out really well. I hope you enjoyed coming on this adventure with me. If it's your first time on the channel, please consider subscribing, give me a like, give me a comment, and until the next time, Schlange Fall.